Hi guys, it's Wolf from Trimeris again. Uh, this is going to be the first video in uh, five or six uh, for newcomers. It's going to describe uh, basic armor construction, um, but definitely going to address all the armor requirements uh, society-wide and more specifically to those who are in Trimeris. Uh, if you live in another kingdom and you're watching these videos, I highly encourage to watch them all uh, because a lot of the armor standards uh, do span across the kingdoms, but always uh, look to your marshal for any differences between our conventions. This video is going to talk particularly about head and neck protection. Um, so let's get right to it. Um, because we're using rattan and we are a full contact sport, we require that the, the helmets be made out of steel. Um, I'm going to put at the very bottom here all the exact requirements. Um, I believe it's .067 of an inch thick steel if it's using mild um, and a fully hand hammered top. If you're using a spun top, which is uh, essentially a pre-made uh, either two conical halves or full top uh, for your helmet, it's a little thinner, so they actually require it to be a uh, minimum thickness of 14 gauge, which is like .075 of an inch. Um, you want your helmet to have a certain amount of mass to you. You have to use steel. Um, you can have brass accents, but essentially this helmet must be made out of steel. Um, I have a good example of such. Uh, this helmet here uh, has two welded halves. So it's two hand hammered halves welded with one solid bead. When you're doing welds, it has to be one solid bead from the inside that extends through the outside all the way up the top and then all the way down the back. Um, through the two welded pieces. You can also do that same for the side. There's nothing wrong with welding a helmet together. Um, this is solid brass. It has the equivalent strength of that .067 mild steel. Um, and it's uh, quite, th it's actually uh, a little bit thicker than the steel that's on the face plate here. One of the things that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our eye slots here cannot allow a one inch dowel to penetrate. Um, if we're just using a bar grill, the bar must be made out of 3 16th steel minimum. Uh, and you cannot let a one inch dowel travel anywhere between uh, your two bars if you have them. Um, I'm also putting more information below uh, regarding the face grill now. Um, with the face plate and or bar grill, you want to extend at least one inch below the chin when the, held, when the head is held directly erect. Um, this is because the bottom of your chin in this situation with one inch down will allow one inch down here and even if my head's fully extended back I still have that gorget protection. So that one inch below is actually very effective. Um, I choose to use a chainmail drape or aventail to uh, help absorb some of that and my helmet actually sits halfway down my neck. Um, this helmet in particular, let's see if we can show you guys, has been padded all the way around. All my internal protrusions have been covered by foam. Um, I use uh, the blue camping mat that you find at Walmart or your sporting goods store um, just for the basic layer and then for the last layer for more comfort I use yoga mat. Um, yoga mat is antibacterial and a lot more absorbent. Uh, it was brought to me by my friend Digrin uh, here in Trimaris and he said hey look your helmet won't stink and it's a lot more comfortable and I have to agree that uh, since I've moved to the half and half, half camping mat, half yoga mat, um, I've been very pleased with the fit of my helmet. Um, speaking with the fit of the helmet, we also have to have a chin strap. Um, you know, that's one of the big things that uh, a lot of the marshals in our kingdom have a problem with is people that 
have a chin strap, but if you push on that face grill, their nose still touches. So there's no real point to having the chin strap if the nose still touches the face grill. So you want to make sure that when you tie that chin strap or you strap it on, you should be able to put your full body weight into that mask and your nose should not touch the front of your helmet. Also here in Trimaris, um, our, uh, our great marshals have um, a wonderful system of they will hold the side of our helmet and say try to come out of it. So. Uh, I have complete faith in my chin strap and the way that I've done it, so I'll, I'll try to back out as much as possible. And that gives them confidence that I'm going to be safe on the field um, and that I'm not going to cause an endangerment to myself or my friends around me. One last thing about helmet construction, and then we'll move on to uh, uh, head ar or neck armor and uh, eyewear, is when you rivet your helmet together, we have to use... Uh, either solid brass, and even that's iffy, um, but you want to use solid brass or uh, steel or iron rivets. Um, you can't use Chicago screws, you can't use snap rivets or pop rivets. Um, this is probably the most important piece of equipment you have. Um, your head is extremely fragile. Um, if you use any sort of inferior material, you're really putting yourself at risk. Um, so let's use the real rivets. Uh, also, these rivets here that are attaching the helmet together um, cannot be any more than two and a half inches apart. Uh, you can put them as close together as you like, but two and a half inches is the max distance. Um, these are actually about an inch and a half apart, um, inch and three quarter actually. Um, and it has a great uniform look, and it's 100% legal. Let's get into eyewear. Um, some of us wear glasses. Um, some of us choose to wear contacts, which are perfectly fine. Um, what we want to do is when we're wearing, let's say we have to have a set of prescription glasses, and without those prescription glasses, we can't fight very well. Um, it's highly recommended and actually required that you get prescription safety glasses or sports goggles. Um, I uh, have a good friend of mine who's uh, just came into fighting uh, probably about a year ago um, and he went out and got uh, basketball sports glasses with his prescription and it didn't cost him an arm and a leg. I know not all of us can afford um, big fancy Oakley goggles and such but we don't have to go fancy. Um, they offer safety glasses at very affordable rates. Uh, the goggles work well because they come with an elastic strap that keep it attached to his face. So when he's chunging around in armor, you know, he isn't having to keep stick his finger with a gauntlet on his hand through his bar grill to try to fix the glasses. Um, so that's a uh, very feasible option. Um, it has to be ballistic glass or plastic. Um, but if you just essentially go to an optician uh, or optometrist um, and tell them you need sports glasses in your prescription, they'll be able to help you out. Let's move on to neck armor. Um, the neck is probably the second more important area on our body that we need to protect. Um, as a paramedic, I can tell you that if, we crush your, if you crush your trachea um, and we get there in time, uh, there's a very small chance that I'm going to be able to do anything for you because if we, if you literally crack that trachea wide open, even if I put a tube down your throat, it's not going to do you much good because it will actually separate down in the chest, uh, down by the carina, and you know your your outlook is not very good. So this is probably um, the most important piece of armor next to the helmet we have. Um, and I'm going to explain. This front piece has to be made of, actually the entire gorget has to be made of what's considered rigid material. Uh, each kingdom considers rigid a little bit different. Here in Trimaris we like to see um, thick leather backed with um, another piece of thick leather or thick leather with some sort of plastic and or um, metal either lining the outside or the inside. Uh, to give it that extra that extra protection. Uh, this one uh, has been kind of dated, so we're going to pull it apart here. You see on the front here there's no padding. Um, if we look closely we're going to see that there is still some glue on there 
to where the padding was. Even though it's a, a steel piece, and when it sits here, if I get hit, it's, it's dispersing all that energy across my entire neck. Um, it's still recommended, if not required in your kingdom, to have a piece of absorbent material in front there to keep that from crushing into your neck. Um, to be honest, uh, I've only been hit in the neck two or three times in the eight years I've been fighting. Um, some a lot more, some a lot less. Again, because my helmets come down halfway through my neck, it's usually a very rare case, but it does happen. Um, also, we have vessels, um, the carotid artery and the jugular vein that run in our neck that blood force trauma can sever, and that's, um, you know, almost a death sentence immediately. I'm not saying it has happened, but it could. Um, this part that I'm about to explain, touches home, is on the back of our gorget. We have to cover our C6 and our C7. Um, which, if you go to the back of your neck and, and lean down, that big nub there is um, C7. Um, it's our cervical vertebrae. Um, we want to be able to protect that with, again, the gorget coming all the way down to that. Um, because in those vertebrae, the cervical nerves that run through there actually contract the diaphragm. So we don't, if we break our neck, um, you're not going to be able to breathe. Um, it's not good. Um, so make sure that the gorget comes down to protect C6 and C7. Um, and again, just a good uh, bit of uh, blue foam does a world of good. Well guys, that's it for this video. Um, I hope it was informative. Sorry to get a little uh, technical with some of the some of the blunt force trauma that could be exerted on the body, but I think it's very important that everybody knows what the possibility is, uh, so therefore we better protect ourselves. You guys have fun out there and be safe.